A, a general principle that I think is really uh, important to bear in mind when thinking about the knee is this is like really, really fundamental anatomy and so fundamental that I didn't even include it in my anatomy discussion, which is that the knee is between the foot and the hip, right? So the knee, the knee is going to be affected by what happens in the foot and it's going to be affected by what happens at the hip. And, and in general, knee problems, at least in my experience, are almost always foot problems or hip problems. The foot starts to, to the inner arch of the foot starts to collapse in like this, it causes an internal rotation in the tibia, and it also tends to cause the knee to kind of go inwardly a little bit. So it starts to create, again, what I was referring to as that valgus force at the knee, it creates an inward force at the knee, right? Um, if, the, if the knee, so if the knee is aligned, in a way where the femur is aligned with the tibia, then as the quadriceps pulls on the patella, it's gonna pull the patella more or less evenly in that groove. But if the femur is misaligned in such a way that let's say the, the knee is, the tibia is kind of uh, inwardly rotating like this because the foot is pronating, right? And now we're starting to get not a, a, a straight line of pull, but as I contract the quadriceps, it's going to tend to pull the kneecap outwardly a little bit. Right? Can you see that? So it would tend to pull the kneecap more into the outer femur. Let's put this guy in warrior two, let's say. Okay. It's kind of a not very good warrior two, but something like that. Let's put his other leg out here. Oops. Okay. All right, well, it's kind of very, very poor warrior too, but, but, um, but we'll kind of, there we go. All right, um, so um, in a pose like warrior two, the knee is bent, the quadriceps muscle is working, um, and it's pulling the patella into that groove Right? And we're in that range somewhere between 50 and 90 degrees of knee flexion, right? So um, warrior two, warrior one, um, high lunge, um, any of those kinds of poses could be problematic for that front knee. Right? If we keep the, the knee, if we keep the kneecap and the toes aligned forward, then we know that the femur is pointing forward because the, knee, because the kneecap follows the femur. And because the ankle joint doesn't really allow for um, rotation, although you can get some rotation of the foot, but not at the ankle joint. We know that then that the tibia is basically pointed forward as well, right? So we know that the femur and the tibia are aligned if the kneecap and the toes are pointing in the same direction. Um, however, for a lot of people um, in Warrior II, um, they may have, let's say, some, let's say some tension um, in the, the muscles of the inner thigh that run from different places on the pelvis here to various places on the, the inner thigh. These are called the adductor muscles. Right? If you've got some extra tension in the adductor muscles, they're going to tend to pull the kneecap, or they're going to tend to pull the knee inwardly like this. Right? And to counter that, we have some muscles on the outer hip, which are called the abductors. Um, uh, as well as the external rotators in the, in the buttock region. And those muscles would be creating the, they don't exactly run like this, they're more here, but they pull on this upper part of the femur to take the leg out. Right? So we've got this kind of dance going on between muscles on the outer hip and muscles of the inner thigh. If the muscles on the inner thigh are like overly tight, let's say, they're going to tend to pull the knee in. And if the muscles on the outer hip are not strong enough um, to, to kind of to compensate, we're going to get this kind of valgus force at the knee, which means that when the quadriceps pulls on the kneecap, it'll pull the kneecap laterally and we might start to get some pain there. Okay.